you may have an Excel file that you just need to show in Revit the same way it appears in Excel. This is what the Draft Excel tool is good at. On the other hand, if you have Excel data that you want to put into Revit element parameter data, then the Model Manager Parameter Transformer tool is the one that you'll want to use. I've got here two example Excel files that we'll bring into Revit to show how this works. In the Draft Excel tool, I'll first select the file to import. This brings up a list of the named ranges that exist in the file. I can just select the named range that I want and click Process File. The file is converted into a Revit drafting view and added to the history list of the project at the right. We can see that the Revit view looks just like the Excel file and can now be placed onto any sheet we want. Let's import our more colorful example, then look at some additional settings and features. Back in the Draft Excel tool, let's select our other file. This one has only one named range, but you also have the option of specifying a specific range by just typing the rows and columns desired. Named ranges are usually preferred because they automatically expand or contract when you add or delete rows or columns in Excel. You can type a custom Revit view name if you'd like, or just accept the default view name. We can notice right away that the colors are missing. So let's look at some of the settings available to see how we can control things like color to make the table look just the way we want. First, we talked about importing named ranges. To create a new named range in Excel, you just need to select some cells, then just type a new name without spaces in this name box at the upper left and press enter. It will now be available as a selection in the tool. Also, if I make changes like stretching a column like this, we can save the change and see how to update it in Revit. When I open the tool, the status of each file will be indicated here in the history list. I can select as many as I want and click the update button to import those changes. You can see that the column width in Revit adjusted to match the change we made in Excel. On the options tab of the tool, we can customize our import defaults. First, you can adjust the font size mapping. 11 point font is the default in Excel, so you may choose to set that equal to your default Revit text height. All other font sizes will be scaled up or down proportional to this mapping. So if you make it bigger in Excel, it will get bigger in Revit. This is the same for the cell sizes as we just saw. If you want them bigger in Revit, just make them bigger in Excel. You normally won't need to adjust the cell or text box scale factors, but you should know that Excel and Revit don't use the exact same character spacing or line spacing for each font typeface and these things are not controllable in Revit. What this means is that sometimes words will wrap slightly differently in Revit than they do in Excel, especially for long paragraphs of text. In our first example, we could change the text box width scale to 1.1 and update to see how you have control to adjust the word wrapping if you really needed to. This 10% increase is way more than what you'd normally want to do, but it shows how the scale can give you control over the wrapping. The next options are for the line weights. You can map the three default Excel border thicknesses to your own Revit line types. And there's a fourth double line border that you can see in this example, but you don't have the option to override that one. And at the bottom, you have your default shading and color options, so we can see why our colored Excel table came in without color. I can change the setting here before importing a table, or I can just change it over here in the history list and save the changes. So when I update that table, I can now see both the text coloring and the cell coloring are now in Revit. When you save the import settings as defaults on the options tab, it will show you the file path to where these are stored. If you want to share these settings with others, you can simply email or deploy your settings file to overwrite theirs. The tool keeps track of which settings were used to import each file, so no matter which user updates the file, it will always get updated according to its saved import settings. If the file path changes, you can also correct it right in the history list to get it reconnected. The history text file is specific to each project, so it is saved in the same folder as the central file. For BIM 360 projects, you will be prompted for a save location the first time somebody in the project uses the tool. You'll want to choose a location that is accessible to your team members, such as a network drive or on BIM 360. To store the file on BIM 360, you will need to have the Autodesk desktop connector installed so you can select your BIM 360 path. And other users will also need the Autodesk desktop connector to see that path. Now I'll share one last hidden trick that could save you some time on some of your projects. If you change the view name in the history list and click apply, it will use that new view name for all future updates. However, if you change the view name 
and I'll just reset the text box width scale at the same time. Then instead of clicking apply changes, you go straight to click update. It will actually treat it as a new view link and add another line to the import history. You now have the same Excel table linked to multiple views. This is just a shortcut if you need to show the same table on multiple sheets since Revit won't allow you to put the same view on multiple sheets. Now, updating multiple views is as easy as selecting them and clicking update when needed. And that's how the Draft Excel tool makes it easy to import and update Excel tables in your Revit projects. Make sure your design teams and collaboration partners are making efficient use of the tools available to them. Visit the website for additional tools and resources to help you on your next projects.